with each other and each has something the other wants and so they settle on a contract. I'm afraid most marriages today are contracts which is why most marriages today break up or many marriages do. In my country the majority of marriages now break up because they were a contract, an agreement. As long as I love you and you love me, we'll stay married. But if you stop loving me or if I stop loving you, the contract is finished. And one feature of modern life is incredible to me that it's called a prenuptial contract or a prenuptial agreement as to what you'll do with the property and the money when you get divorced. Fancy agreeing before you get married as to what you'll do when you get divorced. But that's not quite common in my country and I think it is here. And therefore we're getting right away from God's understanding of marriage as a covenant and right into marriage as a contract. And that's not going to hold together. I know of a man in the north of England whose wife shortly after their marriage became unfaithful to him, started playing around with other men and she got more and more unfaithful and finally she left him and she just was seen on the streets and she rapidly went from bad to worse. And his friends said, why don't you get a divorce? She's no good to you. You're having to look after the children yourself. Get a divorce and find a decent woman who'll be faithful to you and look after your kids and be real family. And he turned on them and he said, never speak to me like that about my wife. She's my wife and I will love her as long as there's breath in her body. And he did. And some years later she died as the result of her bad living and he was at the, at the bedside as she died loving her and praying for her. That's covenant marriage. Contract marriage would have given up long since and changed partners. So, and I'm afraid we're in a situation where even Christians, Bible believing Christians are treating marriage like a covenant and switching partners. We're not in a contract. God calls marriage a covenant. And even if one side breaks the terms in a covenant, the other side stays faithful to promises. See how relevant it is to talk about covenants and contracts. Now I think you've got the difference now and you've seen it. In fact marriage was never in history an agreement between two equal partners. For better or worse the husband, the man was the stronger partner and that is why he proposed and still today it is the custom that men take the initiative and propose the covenant. Furthermore, the bride's father gives her away. Does that happen here? Sometimes. <laughs> and the bride takes the husband's name for he is the stronger of the two. He is the leader of the covenant. So there, even in every marriage today, there are traces of the covenant marriage. In every marriage, there are still some traces left. But for the most part, the vast majority of marriages in the Western world are contracts. I'm encouraged that one thing the credit crunch is doing is cutting down divorces. Did you know that? People can't afford to divorce now. <laughs> I'm almost tempted to shout hallelujah. <laughs> they learn to be a covenant and be faithful to each other. But there it is. Well I was just using that as an illustration but I'm afraid nowadays marriage is not the best illustration of a covenant. So let's think of something else that is. 
And there is something that all of you are involved in, I hope. Have you made your will? Now, I don't know about America, but in Britain it's called a last will and testament. Have you heard that phrase? And the word testament is the same as the word covenant. And the two parts of your Bible are called the Old Testament and the New Testament, which means the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. But I'm going to show you those are bad titles for the two parts of your Bible and very confusing. But when you write your will, that is a covenant. You are the stronger party. You have the money or the property to leave to someone else. And it is your voluntary will to bind yourself to give that property or money to someone else. There is no negotiation or there shouldn't be with your relatives or your friends that you're leaving things to, you are setting the terms. You decide. You can change your will after it's made with a codicil right up to the day you die. But it's you that settles the terms. And the other person, the legatee, can either accept what you leave them or reject it. But they have no choice. They can't change your will. It's your decision. And you've made a covenant, a testament, to leave money or give property to other people when you're dead. Now, it's an interesting point, this, because in the letter to the Hebrews, in the New Testament, it says, when Jesus made the new covenant in his blood, it could not become effective until he had died. That interesting. And your testament or covenant or will will not become effective until you die. Blood is associated with covenants in the scripture. Death is associated with covenants in the scripture. But I'm jumping ahead. So let me now say two very important things. Our God is a covenant-making God. It's incredible when you think of it that the God who made the entire universe should bind himself voluntarily to human beings. After all, he's the big one, he's the strong one. We're the little ones and the weak ones. We're just his creatures, tiny little creatures in space on a little speck of interstellar dust hurtling through space. And here we are. And God voluntarily has put himself under obligation to us. He needn't have done. It's incredible that he ever should. But that's what he's done. And the Bible is the story of the covenants he has voluntarily made towards human, human beings, towards us. That should leave us breathless with amazement. Why should he do that? No reason at all. He could have just made us and left us to go on our way, but far from it. He has bound himself to give certain things to human beings. He's made his testament. He wants to make us his heirs. He wants to make a will in our favor. This is absolutely Unbelievable that God should make and that God should therefore marry human beings. That's even more startling in a sense. And for him, a marriage is always a covenant. And the first people he married or made a covenant with were Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the amazing thing is. Though he was the husband and they were the wife, as it were, of the marriage, he took their name. And forever after has been known as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, a grandfather, father, and son, their names are now written into God. They're his name now. 
So if the bride